He's a professional engineer with degrees from Memorial University in St. John's, uh, Newfoundland, Canada. He's also currently a PhD student at the University of Greenwich. And his research area is evacuation, survival, and rescue for maritime and offshore environments. And today, Rob will speak about uh, the project Safeguard, with, which has a focus on response time data for large passenger ships at sea. So, please. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Um, we've got a small group, I think. Uh, Transportation systems maybe isn't what everybody is keenly interested in with uh, with um, with this conference, perhaps. But we hopefully we can change that. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm going to speak about something <coughs> completely different uh, today. I don't think there are any other papers that focus on the maritime environment on ships and human behaviour during evacuation incidents. Uh, um, specifically, I'm going to be talking about response time data uh, for large passenger ships, and and this is a of great importance, of course, because people travel by ships, people vacation on ships, um, and uh, large numbers of people that, that in particular. And, and ships are, of course, not, not just buildings, but there are buildings and hospitals and jails and shopping centers and everything all, <coughs> all in one package. So they're very complex, very difficult to, to model, very difficult to understand the human behavior in. Um, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, uh, Professor Ed Gallia, Steve Deer, and Lazarus Philippides. And uh, I'll give a, a brief overview because I think we're, we're cutting a couple of minutes off everybody's uh, presentation here today. So um, to jump right into this, um, there's very little data in, in the literature related to passenger vessel um, response time, so response time for passengers on passenger ships. Um, I was involved uh, with Ed and, and Steve and Lazarus and the guys at Greenwich uh, a number of years ago in a project funded through the EU called Fire Exit, uh, which attempted to collect response time data for people on passenger ships. Uh, and it was reasonably successful and led to changes in the international regulations, uh, but uh, we felt that there was a lot more that we could do and should do. So we proposed a project called Safeguard, which is funded through the Framework 7 program. And uh, the, the goal of this project was to collect data on large passenger vessels, uh, three different main classifications, uh, ferries with cabins, ferries without cabins, and cruise ships. Um, from the project, we've collected five response time data sets. I'm, I'm only going to be presenting three of them today for the first two ships. Um, the third ship uh, will be presented at a later date when we finish with the analysis. Uh, but one of the key things to remember, a couple of the key things to remember about this are that um, the, the data is collected at sea, so it's, it's in situ data collection, very relevant, um, and, uh, and, and the results from this are, are being fed into the regulatory uh, structure, to the international regulations at the International Maritime Organization. So this is a very important uh, aspect of this project. And we're hoping that it will, it will, you know, the results won't sit on the shelf. They'll actually be put into practice. <coughs> Uh, so, jumping ahead, the first ship um, was a Ropax ferry. Um, it's a ferry without cabins. It sails between the south of Norway and the north of, of Denmark. Um, it has a journey of about three and a half hours, three and a quarter hours, um, capacity of about 2,000 people, including crew, passengers and crew. Uh, we did two trials on this ship uh, on the 4th and 5th of September 2009, and uh, approximately 1,400 passengers were involved in, in each trial. Uh, the second vessel that we tested was a cruise ship, and this was the Jewel of the Seas, which is operated by, by Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, has a capacity of uh, passengers and crew about 3,342 people, so very large. Um, sailing from Harwich, just northeast of, of London, to Copenhagen, uh, this was uh, continuing on into the Baltic on a seven-day cruise. We, we um, left the ship after two days. Uh, after we completed our trials. We did this on the 31st of July 2010, and there were about 2,300 passengers on board, so nearly nearly full. The data collection methodology, uh, we, we weren't, for the project, we weren't looking just at response times, but uh, again, to focus on the response time data collection, uh, we used video cameras. Um, these were cameras that we brought ourselves uh, and installed on the ships, as well as the CCTV systems that were already installed on the ships. 
Um, we had to, of course, work out details such as synchronization of the cameras and, and, and making sure that we have a reference point to the zero time. And um, on, the, uh, on, the, on the ferry uh, between Norway and, and Denmark, we installed 30 cameras in what we considered to be the most likely starting locations, so where, where passengers would begin their journey, where they would be responding to the alarm. And then for the second ship, we, uh, we, we installed 12 of our own cameras and we used 94 of the ship's cameras to come up with a total of 106 uh, throughout the vessel. So a mammoth task um, to analyze all the video for this. Uh, thousands of passengers and over 100 cameras on one ship alone. Uh, so we divided the task among three team members uh, at the University of Greenwich. Um, we developed a dictionary of definitions for what we thought was a response time and, 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 and to define response time I guess very generally it's the time from uh, when the alarm occurs to when a passenger begins purposeful movement towards the assembly station. Uh, what we did was we came up with a, a range of activities that we saw as common throughout all the, all the, all the trials that we had done and all the videos and the people that we, were, we had looked at. And then we, we underwent a process of, of dividing out the videos among three team members. Now the problem with doing that, of course, is that you run the risk of, of uh, having different methods of analysis. So we did um, a, a test called an inter-rater reliability test where we each took the same group of passengers, used the, the common dictionary of definitions, did the analysis for the same set of people and compared our results. And if we were uh, in disagreement, uh, we, if necessary, we revised the, the definitions and we picked a new set of people and redid the analysis for those and compared the results again. And we kept doing this until we got to within a 90% agreement on our uh, response times. Um, and when we finally reached that point, and it did actually take a few iterations uh, because, you know, understanding human behavior, understanding what people are doing in these types of situations is very difficult. Uh, we moved on to the larger data set and, uh, and completed the analysis for the uh, over 2,000 passengers involved. So the, the video analysis was actually done in the, 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 the left-hand picture was uh, is a picture of Adobe Premiere Pro, which is commonly uh, available uh, software. Uh, the, the, the image on the right shows just an example of one of the locations on one of the ships, so it's a shop. Uh, we identified all the people who appeared to have responded to the alarm and uh, created keys for each of the views for each of the uh, sets of passengers on all the ships. And uh, this gave us an easy way to go back and, and check people's behavior. If there was an issue, uh, if we saw very unusual uh, outliers in the data, for instance, we could, we could go back to the data reference, to the video reference, and determine if it was, in fact, um, a realistic number if it was an error and, and, and that was the case in a few situations so it's a useful thing to have. Um, then um, one of our colleagues uh, at the University of Greenwich who's actually presenting upstairs right at this moment uh, developed a, a small piece of software to extract all the information that we, uh, that we provided in the Adobe Premiere Pro analysis software. And, uh, and that was exported into an Excel spreadsheet where we could start plotting the data then of course. Because what you get out at the end of this is, is just the time, basically, um, for, just for producing response time. So just an overview of all the data. So in all, we had 2,200 data points over both ships. So 1,003 for the two trials on the Superspeed 1, which is the ship sailing between Norway and Denmark. Uh, 533 on the first day and 470 on the second. And uh, we had 1,228 response times on the Jewel of Seas. Now this is a this is a massive data set for for ships uh, in particular. Um, the the results from our previous project in the early 2000s, uh, I think we were able to get around 70 data points. And and even with 70 data points, uh, the results were so novel that they they did lead to changes in the international regulations. Um, so we're very hopeful that this will be of use. Uh, mm -hmm in the same uh, arena. Um, we found that all the response times were log normally distributed, which is, uh, I think, um, commonly understood now for the built environment. The passenger demographics on both ships was comparable. Um, so we have roughly the same uh, numbers of people from the same age groups. Um, you'll see the term RTD, that's response time distribution. Uh, for both trials on the super speed, one, uh, day one and day two were found to be the same 
and I'll go into that in detail. And, and uh, another major finding was that the, the response times for people in cabin areas on the cruise ship were quite different than those in public spaces on the cruise ship, and, and this is important. So to go into um, some of the details of this, uh, the left is trial one and the right is trial two on, on, the, on the ferry without cabins. Uh, we did uh, normality tests and showed, of course, that these weren't normally distributed, so we were able to go and then do Man Whitney tests to compare the two um, uh, distributions. And when we plot them together and we do the Man Whitney tests, we find that, lo and behold, they are the same distribution. So what this means is that we can, well, it's a, it's a fairly significant result, actually. It means, number one, that we can combine the two data sets and say that that's relevant for uh, both days. The, the both populations were different uh, on day one and day two, um, but still we get the same response time distribution. And, and this is important because it suggests as well that if we were to redo the test in the same type of structure with the same type of notification systems um, uh, with a different population of people but similar demographics, then we would again expect to get similar results. Um, so this, the meaning of this really is that it might not be necessary to keep doing these types of tests for this type of ship. So when you combine both data sets, this is the overall combined data set, and then we fit our log normal distribution and provide the equation. And uh, this is, has been written up as an information paper to the International Maritime Organization. Uh, if we make a comparison with the current tests um, on the super speed with the, the results from the previous project, we also find that they are almost identical. Um, and again, doing um, Man Whitney tests, we determined that in fact, statistically, the distributions are the same again. So now we can combine all three data sets, in fact. And that's um, uh, very significant because it, it gives further weight to what was done previously. Um, and uh, it increases the size of the data set. And it again suggests that you know, these are different ships now, but of the same class, and yet the response time distributions are the same. So it's a, it's a, it's a significant finding again. So moving on to the cruise ship, uh, the jewel of the seas. So if we plot all the data, all the response data, again, we see it's normally, it's log normally distributed. Um, we can fit a, a distribution to it, but by itself, it's, it's not necessarily uh, that useful because it describes the responses throughout the ship. Now, in, on the ship, we had uh, two main categories of spaces. There would be cabin spaces and public spaces. And one of the things that we were interested in was, do people in cabins respond differently to the alarms than people in public spaces? So when we divide our, our data into the two groups, we find that we can fit log normal distributions to them uh, and compare them again using Man Whitney uh, U test, and if we pop them together, we find that they are significantly different, and statistically, they are different. Um, the dashed lines are for public spaces, so this is the distribution for public spaces, and, and the solid line is the, is the response time distribution for uh, cabin spaces. Um, and uh, from this, we can see that the response time for people in cabins is, as you would expect, I think, longer. Than, uh, on average than, uh, than people in public spaces. Uh, the important part about this, of course, is that um, for a cruise ship and for the different areas on the ships, uh, there should be different response time distributions used when undertaking an evacuation analysis. And the current regulations provide one distribution for all classes of ships for daytime cases and one distribution for all classes of ships, all areas, for nighttime cases. Um, the output from this suggests that, well, first of all, uh, we, we need to have different distributions for both locations. Uh, but second of all, when you compare the public spaces, and hopefully I'm not losing you here now, but the public spaces on the cruise ship with the public spaces on the ferries, you might expect that you know these results would be, the responses would be similar. Um, so. You know, there, there are different classes of vessel, but hey, you know, a public space is a public space, you might, you might think. Um, so when we, when we make this uh, comparison uh, with the two ferries now that we've done testing for, as well as the cruise ship, we find that they are quite a bit different again. So, so this shows the response time distribution for all three ships and the, the light solid line 
the, at the bottom here is the cruise ship. So what this suggests is that the response of passengers on cruise ships in public spaces is different than the response of passengers uh, in public spaces on ferries. Two different classes of ships, two different responses. So uh, the suggestion is that we need, we, well, we need to use different response times. And uh, from the discussion upstairs earlier, of course, uh, you know, the response of passengers to alarms is, is quite an important aspect of the evacuation process and it's quite important to, to the overall modeling process. Right, so I think I've come in at 18 minutes, I think. <laughs> it's the first time it's ever happened. I've got two slides. So, uh, in summary, uh, we've collected data for 2,231 passengers uh, on responses. Uh, these were trials at sea on a Ropex ferry as well as a cruise ship. Um, we found that all the distributions were, uh, were log normal, which is consistent with the, the, uh, the findings from the built industry, from the built environment. Um, we found that the distributions for the ferry without cabins were both the same uh, on both days of trials, uh, which suggests that we can repeat trials on that type of a vessel and expect to get the same type of results. Uh, we found that um, the, uh, the distribution for public spaces on the, uh, on the Super Speed 1 was the same as that for an earlier ferry, but different uh, for the cruise ship. And we found that uh, um, the distribution for public spaces on the cruise ship was uh, different than the distribution in uh, cabin spaces. Uh, which suggests that you know a, a different distribution should be used for both those areas, and um, we, we're presenting this data to the International Maritime Organization later this fall, um, in, uh, in, in a, and as well in a, um, a workshop with the Royal Institution for Naval Architects at the end of November. So if people are interested in that sort of uh, work, uh, you can come out and find out some of the more general findings of the project as well. Um, and I think that's. Uh, that's about it. Thank you very much. Thank you.